It was reignited in January after the Lifetime docuseries Surviving R. Kelly featured interviews with seven accusers and former members of his inner circle. They all say that Kelly preys on vulnerable women and young girls. I am surprised that you agreed to do it. Why are you sitting down with us today? I'm very tired of all of the uh, lies. I've been hearing things and, you know, and seeing things on the blogs and, you know, I'm just, I'm just tired. What are the lies that you're hearing that disturb you most? Oh, my God. Um, all of them. Um, got little girls trapped in the basement, helicopters over my house, mm -hmm. um, trying to um, rescue someone that doesn't need rescuing because they're not in my house, handcuffing people, starving people. I have a harem, uh, what you call it, a, um, a coat. Mm -hmm. I don't even really know what a coat is, but I, I know I don't have one, you mm -hmm. know. Have you done anything that you regret? Have you done anything wrong? Lots of things wrong when it comes to women that I apologize, but I apologize in those relationships at the time I was in the relationships. Have okay? you broken any laws when it comes to women? Absolutely not. The six-part series interviewed 50 people, mm -hmm. family members, your former tour manager, numerous women who all claim that you abused them. Yeah. Are you saying everybody in that documentary was not telling the truth about you? Everybody? If, if, if you really look at that documentary, which I'm sure you have, I have. everybody said something bad about me. Nobody said nothing good. Mm -hmm. They was describing Lucifer. I'm not Lucifer. I'm a man. I make mistakes, but I'm not a devil, and by no means am I a monster. I'm going to name the names. Andrea Kelly, your ex-wife, Kitty Jones, mm -hmm. Lisa Van Allen, Lizette Martinez, Jerron DePace, mm -hmm. Faith Rogers, yeah. Asante McGee. You're saying everything they said in that documentary about you is not true. They are lying on me. Why would these women say the same thing about you, that you are controlling, that you are abusive, that you tell women when to eat, when to go to the bathroom, when they can sleep, where they can dress. Why would all these women tell these different stories about you if they were not true and they don't know each other? That defies logic to me. Right, right, until you hear the explanation. You can start a rumor on a guy like me or a celebrity just like that. All you have to do is push a button on your phone and say, so-and-so did this to me, R. Kelly did this to me, and if you get any traction from that, if, you, if you're able to write a book from that, if you're able to get a, a, a reality show, then any girl that I had a relationship in the past that I, it just didn't work out, she can come and say the same exact thing. Are you blaming this on social media? I'm talking about the power of social media. In 2008, R. Kelly was found not guilty on 14 counts of child pornography after prosecutors in Chicago failed to convince a jury that he was a man seen in a sex tape with a girl as young as 13. What do you want to say to your fans? Last month, Kelly was indicted again, this time charged with aggravated criminal sexual abuse of four women, including three who the charges say were minors at the time. Have you ever had sex no. with anyone under the age of 17? No. Never? No. I have to tell you, it's so hard to believe that based on all that we've read I'm gonna tell and what you the women said about you. I'm going to tell you something. What women said about you. What women said about me. What women. So nobody's allowed to be mad at me and be yeah. scorned and, and lie on me. Mm -hmm. So they're lying on you. That's your explanation. They're lying on you. Absolutely. 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 You feel that people have maligned your character. I have been assassinated. I have been buried alive, but I'm alive. So I think the point you're making is, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, that you have never held anybody against their will. I don't need to. That, Why would I? Well, I'm, I'm, How stupid would it never be held for anybody. R. Kelly with all I've been through in my way, way past to hold somebody, let alone four, five, six, fifty, you said, why, how stupid would I be to do that? I didn't say you That's were holding... That's stupid, guys. I didn't... Is this camera on me? <laughs> yes, it's on. That's stupid. Use your common sense. Don't... Forget the blogs. Forget how you feel about me. Hate me if you want to. Love me if you want. But just use your common sense. How stupid would it be for me to... With my crazy past and what I've been through, 
oh, right now, I just think I need to be a monster and hold girls against their will, chain them up in my basement, and, and don't let them eat and don't let them out unless they need some shoes down the street from their uncle. Robert, Stop it. Y'all Robert, quit playing. Quit playing. Robert, I didn't do this stuff. This is not me, y'all. I'm fighting for my life. Y'all killing me with this I gave y'all 30 years of my career. Robert. 30 years of my career. Y'all trying to kill me. You're killing me, man. This is not about music. I'm trying to have a relationship with my kids, and I can't do it. What, what? Y'all just don't want to believe the truth. You don't want to believe it. At this point, we briefly pause the interview to give Kelly a moment. His publicist helped calm him down. I hope this camera keep going. No, we're going to let the camera keep rolling. This is not true. Right, oh. This is not, doesn't even make sense. Why would I hold all these women? Their mothers and fathers told me, we're going to destroy your career. But Kelly's emotions remained raw. Robert. It's real girls out there missing. It's real young girls out there being abducted, being raped, OK? They really are on chains. They really do have chains on their uh, on their wrists, and they can't get out. Robert, and they're ending up buried in. Death. Robert, we have to have a conversation. This is really, not I, me. I don't want you just ranting at the camera. Well, I, think I came here for them to hear me okay, talk. But I need help. What kind of help? This is the kind of help I need. Yes. What kind of help? I need somebody to help me not have a big heart, because my heart is so big. People betray me, and I keep forgiving them. You sound like you're playing the victim here. You sound like R. Kelly. You do. When I listen to you, I'm it just does sound the like truth. you're playing the victim I'm card. just telling the truth. And the reason I'm emotional but Robert, and I apologize you... for that no, is no, because no, this no. is the first time I was able to, to say speak. something. Yeah. I've said nothing. Gail, you um, remained tough and calm throughout that. Well, I mean, it, w it wouldn't do any good if we both got hysterical yeah. Yeah. <laughs> or if we, got, if we both got very emotional. And you could see uh, he, he felt that, in his mind, everybody's lying. I said, but there's so many people who are telling the same story. And he kept going back, going back. I said, but the women don't know each other. And he said, how do you know they don't know each other? On social media, you're connected. He thinks everybody's trying to do a book deal or they're trying to do a movie and that really are, people are conspiring against him. I have to say, I've never seen anything like that. What was he like before the interview? Because you didn't well, really know him that well. No, I don't. He got very emotional several times. I met him maybe beyond a five years ago at a party where you just say, hi, how are you? You know, it's not the time to say, remember we met five years ago? I hate it when people do that. Mm -hmm. So um, I did ask, can we have a, uh, have a conversation before the interview got started? I wanted to say, we're going to give you a platform to say whatever you want to say. It's no secret that he lives at Trump Tower in, in Chicago. So we went to his apartment there, and we had a conversation. Um, and you walk into his apartment. There's a big welcome home. There's a Christmas tree uh, that he keeps up all year long since his mother died back in 1993. He's very close to his mother, misses her very much because it was her favorite holiday. Mm -hmm. So he keeps a Christmas tree up all year long. It was like 90 degrees in there because he was resting his voice. He said he was going but, to be singing later. But what he is accused of is dastardly. Exactly. Exactly. I think what you did, Gail, was allow him to tell his story and to see, though, his behavior, his temperament, is, I think, what is probably what is most revealing of this interview as well. The pounding of the fist, the getting up. I was worried about you. I, I was actually worried about you when I saw the pictures. Well, it's funny. A favorite son, favorite daughter, and Oprah all called me and said, were you afraid? Did you think he was going to hit you? I actually never thought that. I think that he was, I thought I might get accidentally clobbered, but I didn't think that he would deliberately try to hurt me. I never felt in danger talking to him. I just felt that he had a lot of emotion. He wanted to release it. And, you know, when it was all over, we had a conversation, we said goodbye, and I think at the end of the day, he was glad that he was able to say what he wanted to say. Okay. Even if... Okay. But it's hard to believe when you say, Robert, there are so many allegations yes. and so many accusations, and you've never had sex with anybody under the age of 17. And it took this jury less than a day to deliberate. Mm -hmm. Yes, I mean, exactly, exactly right. There's more he coming, says, right? And he says more will come out on his side of the story, too.